And these are all things you go through when you pursue intense meditation. Because it's not just a change, superficial change in thinking. These are very, very deep, profound changes in your body, in your mind, in your brain. And just like even if you are a billionaire, when you move from one house to another, it takes time to get adjusted into the new house. You unpack your boxes, you set things up, it takes time. Similarly, when you get to each stage in meditation, it takes time to adjust to the new stage. Because each stage brings about something new, something more, something deeper. And then you automatically feel kind of disconnected with the world and it's not a temporary disconnection. Then it's a struggle to somehow gel with the world and its ways. You actually slow down. You become very, very effective, but you kind of slow down and you no longer can rush things and something just dies in you. I don't know what else, how else to put it and it cannot be revived. From milk, you have become ghee and uh, you've gone through the churning, you've gone through the heating. Now you've turned into ghee and there is no process in the world and that can now turn you back into milk. So at some time in, on your journey, you go through irreversible changes. And then there is, they, that's a toll gate, you know, you can't just turn through the same gate. You have to now go all the way and maybe do something different to come back on the highway. So uh, it's a point of no return. So the first four stages, yeah, you can easily lose. You can go back to zero very easily. But beyond the fourth stage, it kind of starts to sink in your very existence. And then there is no return at all. Kabir said, oh, I, I went in search of God. And in that search, I was trying to find him, but I lost myself. And now the drop has gone into the ocean. Please tell me if there is any way to get the drop back. There is no way. The drop has become the ocean and it will now remain the ocean. Even if it evaporates, nobody can say it's the same drop that's gone up in the air now and will come back in rain. It's just, you've become the ocean. And when you become the ocean, everything lives in you without disturbing the ecosystem. From tuna, to tiny fish, to giant whales and sharks. They'll all live. All emotions are pure mana machal pratishtam. Smudma pravishanti yattavatta. Tattvatta kama yam pravishanti sa shanti maapnoti na kama kami. Krishna says, Arjun, when you become the ocean, all your desires will go into you. All your wants everything you want to do, all the pleasures, you will experience them, but they will not move you. They will not be able to shake you because the sea does not move. Sea remains where it is. And only such a person who has become the ocean can remain unaffected in pleasures. Everybody else will become attached to the pleasure. They have to have it. But when you become the ocean, you are okay having it and you are okay not having it. You are okay having it later, you are okay having it less, you are okay having it more, you, you just are okay. It's called samta, evenness, that equanimity under all circumstances. And really that is the goal of meditation. The same goal can be accomplished through other methods. Devotional service, bhakti is one of those. I'm sure what Neela experienced or what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu experienced was not through meditation or what even Jesus experienced. Their path was not meditation. Their path was a path of surrender, of 
complete surrender. That's why when they do Hare Krishna Kirtan, they raise their arms that I have surrendered. I, I don't want to hold on to anything. I don't want to think about anything. I'm too scared and I'm too tired and I can't figure it out on my own and I don't want to. My life is in your hands. You play me how you like. You lead me how you like. Destroy me if you like. Keep me if you like. Do what you like. I don't want to think about it. I am tired. All my life, I've been trying to figure stuff out and I have failed. Every time I thought I had it figured out, it wasn't the truth. Every time I thought this thing will make me happy, it didn't make me happy. Every time I thought, you know, I know exactly what I need, that was exactly not what I needed. You know, so I don't want to think anymore. Please, you destroy me, torment me, torture me. Do my Durgati. Do what you will. But I'm telling you one thing, my proclamation, that you are my Gati, I'm only going to follow you. And you are my Mati, and you are the only thing that matters to me. Now it doesn't matter how you keep me, what you do to me. Because I have surrendered. I don't even watch your time. I don't even watch your vision, Lord. If I just understand you a little. If I only get to understand what matters to you. I'll just be happy with that. I have nothing to offer other than my heart, impure heart. Mind full of desires and afflictions. In all this, I do have only just one desire. Please, in all lifetimes, keep me close to you. Keep me by your lotus feet. I don't want that in the next lifetime again, I go through 30, 40, 50, 60 years before I figure out that you are the one for me. What I want is that when I'm born, I should know that this is my refuge, this is my sanctuary, that this is where I belong, this is what I have to do. I don't want to do this, gain this learning when it's already too late. Or when I am overwhelmed with sense of guilt that, oh, I did this, I did that. I don't want that. From the very beginning, I just want this. Now, moksha se akaksha bhavivavan chapi na chame. I don't want moksha, I don't want salvation. I don't want the sukhas, the duties, the pleasures of this world. I don't want any sukha. I don't want any science. I don't want to understand meditation. I don't want to understand anything. The only thing I ask of you is in every lifetime of the divine you should be my mother and I should be your son in every lifetime that's the only thing I ask for I want to die with your holy name on my lips Ridhani Rudrani Bas Shiv 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 Bhavani Rudrani Kata Hua Chala Jau just on my lips chanting your holy names I want to breathe my last that way during the last moments, I don't want to think about, oh, who's going to do what with this property or what will happen to my children or what will happen to this and that and the other person, what will happen to my wealth. I, I hope this person I hate doesn't take, you know, what belongs to me because all of that won't matter after a moment. So all the only thing that matters to me is that I should be immersed in your thought. This is a much easier path than meditation. But only the very strong can surrender. Because the weak always clings. The weaker you are, the more you cling to what you have. Because you don't want to lose it. If you are strong, you say, well, I'm happy to lose myself. Only the very strong, the very great, the very intelligent, the very graceful, the very divine people can surrender. Otherwise, it's such a beautiful path, who wouldn't want to surrender? But how many can surrender? Their mind comes in play, it starts calculating, starts doing all that analysis, but if that happens, this happens, and then it leads to all sorts of confusions. 
And if you have confusion, it's like you have a curtain. You can't see through. So the path of surrender is the same as the path of meditation. In meditation, you are like the monkey. You have to cling to the mother. It's your job. If you hold on to the mother tight, you won't fall. She will take you along wherever she is jumping around. The path of surrender, the path of bhakti, is loving like a kitten. She says, I am lying down. Mother will take me. I don't, I'm not afraid that she uses her sharp teeth to gore, to devour, to gorge on her prey. I know she's going to lift me with the same sharp teeth. I know I won't be hurt. That's bhakti. One is being like kitten, the other one is being like monkey. Now somebody with the restive tendencies of the mind, restlessness, would want to be the monkey. It would take a lot to be a kitten. But a kitten lives without burden. You know, a monkey keeps on barking like this dog all, all their life. Always restless, always talking, talking, talking in their mind. If not with somebody or to somebody or with God or to God or with their loved ones or with the people they hate. They're always talking. Mind is always talking. It's restless like a monkey. If you look at cows, all the animals, especially those who are vegetarians, look at how beautiful their eyes are. A doe, a deer, a stag or a cow or an elephant. There is that softness in their eyes. You look in their eyes and you know they are quiet creatures. They just sit there all day and they can just ruminate and you know just... There is a grace in their movement. And they are just soft and slow. Because only the one who is aware can be slow. The one who is not aware is always in a rush. The patience is a virtue that only a rare few can have. And the more mindful you are, the more patient you become automatically. You become really patient. And because you know nature is operating at a different scale. And let nature run its own course. Because it will not disappoint you. If you have infinite patience, you can have instant results. If you have, if you really believe in God or in nature, you express your desire and be patient and sit back. And it will materialize. If you are not patient, you express your desire and you want it today, you want it now, a million hurdles will come. And even after the fulfillment, you will not feel fulfilled. Because somehow my ego, my conscious mind is now in play. I'm trying to fight with nature. No chance. Try as you may. Absolutely no chance whatsoever. It's much better to be in a mode of acceptance and say, you know, let me just see this rose, this lotus. It's unfolding. Some power is there. Something's working on it. The same power is also working on unfolding my life. Why do I want to rush and crush the flower? Why don't I just see what is happening to it? That comes from either surrender or mindfulness. So, by no means meditation is the only way. You cannot falsify it. You cannot artificially surrender. You cannot say, I'm going to really feel attached to this person. Either you do or you don't. Or maybe sometimes you do it over time. Sometimes your heart is won over time. It's not love at first sight. Because chances are, if it's love at first sight, it will come crashing down very soon. When you think through, or when you feel a certain way over a period of time, that bond is likely to last a lot longer than, yes, this is a person. Because that's a very limited view. So surrender can't be falsified. Nor can any other emotion. There is many types of samadhi. 
there is a certain bliss you experience even in discourse for example or in bhajan it's called satsang you experience certain peace when satsang is happening but sometimes you want to go beyond satsang you don't want to be dependent on a guru or on a path to feel peace and happiness and bliss so meditation is the path of completely turning inward so you realize the ocean you are not intellectually but experientially empirically it's just one of the paths like i was saying it's not the only path is initiation necessary in meditation no is initiation necessary in sadhana no nothing is necessary it's only a matter of right guidance can help you get there faster that's really the only thing and you know think about art every painter every artist paints differently even if you have a teacher it doesn't mean you'll paint like the teacher the teacher will tell you the basic techniques and then it's all your expression then you go you develop your own style same is with meditation same is with sadhana it's not like you have to replicate or imitate your guide or your master or your guru it's you learn the basics and then you start experimenting you see what works for you what doesn't work for you and then what are the pitfalls you know that come on your way so it's just guidance and another name for guidance is initiation simply put it's like if you want to attend a lecture in a uni you have to enroll in that uni even though you may be on a scholarship which means you don't have to pay anything you still have to enroll when you enroll the the lecturer the professor knows there is a bond here there is a commitment here the student has enrolled therefore the student is serious and then they teach you if you don't enroll they don't know if you're just visiting the town and just happen to sit in the classroom for a day and will what they are saying make sense to you or not even that is not guaranteed i always say you know think about we study 15 years on average on an average before we get a bachelor's degree right and even then there is no guarantee of a job you start as a graduate a uh, role in a graduate role but with meditation because it's so easy to commercialize it and feel on people's uh, vulnerability with meditation we think i'm going to start today and within a year or 6 months i'm i'm really going to be up there you know with everything else with things so mundane in life building a house of bricks with no life in it i may have to work 20 years before i save enough to build a little building and here i'm talking about annihilating the tendencies of my mind that have been carried on for millions of years and i'm expecting to do it in an instant sorry i don't know of any such method unless we drown ourselves and not breathe and not come out very much <laughs> really that's so i think that's what i mean the patience and persistence and practice and then you will definitely get somewhere it's impossible then that you won't reach somewhere at every step of the way you will gain something